Along the banks of the Illinois River and the majestic bluffs surrounding Peoria, many great businesses have been born, from the early French fur traders to the whiskey barons of the 1800s to one of the most successful companies ever to rise from its banks. Founded in 1925, Caterpillar had grown to be the most successful heavy equipment manufacturer in the world, but the early 80s presented new challenges, and with that, new opportunities. Swept by the winds of globalization, Caterpillar was looking for innovative solutions to make its business run better. Out of these challenging times, a new business was born inside of Caterpillar, a business built around maintaining and repairing Caterpillar's increasingly computerized manufacturing assets. We kind of scribbled on, uh, on, a, on a piece of paper or on a napkin there what we had, what was going on in, uh, in the plant we were working in. And we came here and we were talking and I, I guess it was a dream talk and we were talking, drinking and just enjoying ourselves and as I doodled I made the napkin. It was uh, really a, a summary of the technology that we saw at that time that was uh, on, on the forefront of manufacturing. And we doodled that napkin down and I, I don't know if it was God or who, but I saved that napkin. I put it in my pocket and we saved it. But Dick knew that in order to achieve the growth he envisioned, things would have to change. And that meant expanding the business outside of Caterpillar. ATS was really a product of Caterpillar Venture Capital. And so with that, Caterpillar did allow Dick and, and one of the other owners in the beginning of myself and then Vern for the most part, we were put on a special assignment. So we worked at that special assignment in the Caterpillar environment for a long time. And when it came time to actually start, there was so much excitement. And as far as the feelings when we moved away from uh, East Peoria, I think uh, Clearly there was a chance for us to just look back about it. There could have been some fear, but we didn't feel fear. We were all excitement. We were optimistic. We were uh, looking forward to the challenge. Really didn't recognize it as risk. It was opportunity. It wasn't about leaving Caterpillar. It was about starting ATS. After a meeting with Caterpillar Venture Capital, Dick left with a spring in his step and a huge opportunity on the horizon. So on April Fool's Day, 1985, 33 dedicated Caterpillar employees left the jobs that had sustained them to chase a dream that would prove difficult to bring to fruition. The pace was fast, and there was a saying, get on the train or get swept under by it. Many did get on board, and many did not survive the pressure. We had a, a group of people that were willing to work as hard or long as do whatever it takes to get the job done, and if you didn't fit into that, it would be difficult. There were people who went back to Caterpillar, and that was a good choice for them. I mean, it wasn't the right place for everyone. We weren't just 33 guys, gals, going out and punching with our fingers, 33 fingers. We were a fist that went together and we punched. They worked hard and played even harder, burning the candle at both ends and in the middle, and the rewards started to pay off. But when a young graduate from Oklahoma responded to an ad in the Wall Street Journal, little did he know what opportunities the company's future would hold. Um, I really didn't interview with any companies like ATS. Um, but when I walked into ATS, it all just kind of hit me that that was the type of company that I wanted to be in, a company that I could make a difference in, that was small enough uh, you know, that I could be, have some importance, I could be exposed to a lot. Um, but then also had the, the kind of the support and the structure of Caterpillar behind it. But technology was changing at a rapid pace. The IT infrastructure was dominated by DEC and IBM, and factory automation was moving at a rapid pace. More and more computers hit the factory floor. We knew that would continue, and we also assumed other companies would be doing the same. This is 25 Nightside with Tom McIntyre. America is automating re-automating in order to meet the challenge of, of uh, manufacturing in the future. And as a result of that, uh, there is going to be a lot of computers used, and with that automatic equipment, there's going to be a lot of need for service. This led ATS to increase focus on the factory automation aspect of their business, which could mean more opportunities with larger customers who could afford the new cutting-edge robotics and automation. 
So we knew the technology was coming to other industries, uh, coming to outside of Caterpillar, and uh, we could begin to see how all of this was uh, going to tie together. After several years of selling industrial parts repair to the big three in Detroit, Jeff Owens is ready for a new challenge. And the challenge would lead him to join the team that would sell the company's first factory maintenance contract. That first contract, and we would say, yes, yes, we'll take that on, and we'll take this on. And oh, Jeff would sit there and be writing viciously. I did some research. We found a Kinko's and we set up shop there. We get our computers going and we started working on the proposal. It was maybe seven o'clock at night after dinner. We would write that contract up, spend the whole night at Kinkle's, write it up, throw it away, write it up again. And when the sun came up, uh, we were still there and we had our finished proposal and we were ready to deliver it that day. And then we went back and presented it and lo and behold, I think both of us, our mouths dropped open when we sold it. But uh, when the boys called up and said they got the deal, I said, finally, you sold something. And, uh, and, and, and they, they, they were the pioneers. I mean, they put together the first contract and they put the contract together sitting in front of the customer. We moved on and we got into the factory maintenance business. But fast growth has its consequences. The new success put the company in overdrive, running ahead of its headlights, revealing a need for a more disciplined approach to its business. When Dick brought in um, Zinger Miller and the Service Quality Initiative, that had such an impact on so many people. It changed people in their, the way they looked at their work. It changed people in the way they looked at their families. And, you know, it was, it was a change in not only how we did business, but it was a change in how well we were equipped to do our job. In the early days of the company, our mantra was work hard, work as hard as we possibly could, and we could overcome almost any obstacle that was put in front of us through hard work. We didn't really always think about working smart, and as we've developed over time, we've gotten a lot smarter about how we work. This new discipline would form the cornerstone of the ATS cultural commitments, the process that to this day provides guidance and governance to the company. As the company adopted this new direction, sales began to flourish. Customers expanded their businesses with the company, and employment expanded. But once we started working smarter, uh, we started to grow like crazy and have a lot more success, and that's been a lot more fun for all of us. In fact, employment jumped from 300 in 1989 to 3,300 in 2015. With key customers like Caterpillar, Eaton, Borg Warner, George Pacific, ATS has grown to be the leading provider of maintenance services and has received national recognition. More now on jobs and what some are calling domestic outsourcing in manufacturing companies. Advanced Technology Services steps in when a client wants to step out of the business of maintaining its factory and by letting clients focus on their core business, ATS itself is growing and hiring along the way. Now with its expanded IT operations in Chicago, offices in the UK and Mexico, ATS is truly a diversified international company. I'm really excited about growing not only here in the United States but also internationally. Uh, we expanded into the UK and then into Mexico and are really happy with those operations and we are continuing to look at new markets to expand into. From industrial parts repair to IT services to a full host of factory maintenance services, ATS is firmly positioned for exceptional growth in the future. So my aspiration is for us to be a billion dollar company. I mean it's a dream we've had for a long time and I absolutely believe we can do it. But 30 years later, the spirit of the company continues to thrive and attract some of the most highly regarded companies in the world and some of the most talented professionals in the business. It's how the concept of advanced technology services has not only survived, but has thrived in its relentless pursuit to make business run better.